Hello, my name's Teresa from All Sewn Up. I'm talking to you from London today. I thought I'd introduce you to my great passion and that is slow stitching. Now I've started with the cover on this mega, mega beast um, called Jaws. And as I undo it, you'll see exactly why it's called Jaws. <laughs> but I will start with the cover. The cover started out as just an ordinary size, like a sheet of A4, but it grew and it grew and it grew. So much so, I had to put this extension this much either end to accommodate the growing pages. Now, it's basically slow stitch throughout. The only machine stitching is on the pieces here that I've taken from a tablecloth to applique on top of a, a groundwork of slow stitching. Applique is when you cut out one piece of fabric and apply it, applique it to another piece. Now slow stitching, I believe, started round about 2010 with the slow food movement and since then everything's gone slow. It actually refers to a state of mind and not the pace at which you, you carry out the task, which I thought was interesting. But anyway, I want to rush through this so I don't bore you too much. Now what I've done here, these are all little squares and they were sewn onto a background of calico. So there's underneath this is calico. It's all um, mostly running stitch. It's running stitch that is associated with slow stitch. But having said that, any, I think any hand embroidery um, you can turn into slow stitch. But I've applied some butterflies here. This bit I've added some bling, a few pearls and a little bit of bling here, if you can see that. Piece uh, here is from a vintage tablecloth. I actually caught someone throwing that out and like I expect many of you, I sort of screeched, no, and I saved it, rescued it. So it does feature quite largely in the journal. A little bit of antique gold lace here and down here um and some ribbon woven well it isn't actually woven i'm i'm fibbing here it's couched down now couching is just a method of laying your a thread on the surface and securing it or stitching it into place with a stitch from side to side I've chosen cross stitch here, but you can do it with, with lots of stitches. Now, if I were to pull this here, I could pull it out because the thread here, the ribbon here, isn't actually sewn down. It's just secured. For added interest, I've um, added some like twine here and a little bit of netting from a lace curtain and i've dotted it about with sequins and i don't know if you can see this but it's netting this has been covered in netting and it's probably that that's giving it a little bit of shine in different areas covered it in netting from a vegetable bag they're absolutely invaluable for all sorts of wonderful things so don't throw them before you've experimented with them now as I said this part here is an extension so inside on the extended bit um, I've edged it with lace down here once again I love weaving so I've woven between the holes of the lace along here added a pocket with a card I've stuck a picture on there of the old style wooden cotton reels and that's just for journaling doodling or whatever you want to do now this net here um, belonged to my partner and I actually wanted just this much net from his curtains that were hanging up 
and I said do you mind if I just have a little piece of that from the corner and he said no 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 don't worry I'll bring it over and he turned up with about 10 yards of a 90 foot drop curtain that he'd taken down from his patio doors and I, I screeched oh, I, I, you know I didn't want to be ungrateful but I don't need all that that's all I needed it was pure white so I coffee dyed it and the rest of it is in my bedroom all wrapped up in a ball I've no idea what to do with it <laughs> no doubt by the end of the year though it'll all be used up this is vintage tablecloth again I haven't dyed that because I, I liked the whiteness of that. So that's the extended bit. Now this was actually the original inside cover and it's on Binka. Now I don't know if you can still get Binka. It's, you can get the fabric but I don't know if it's still called Binka. It's four holes to the inch and it's a great way of practicing your sewing skills or learning to to sew building up your confidence even um i taught textiles for, for many years and that's how this is how i would build up confidence in a very nervous learner but it's so lovely to use that it was often difficult to move them on from this it's just a gorgeous way of sewing this consists of long stitches and short stitches um small big when you're designing the key word is contrast contrast in size in thickness in texture so i've tried to incorporate it in a lot of my work um, we have the the big stitches here against the smaller ones here and the roughness of some of these this is a little bit rough along here against the smoothness here it's all for added interest this piece of pink here has been appliqued and there's this looks like a stain but it isn't it's some really nice antique gold lace there which was laid onto the binka and then stitched over so that's that page now this portfolio oh, portfolio not a portfolio well i suppose it is it's a journal this journal was made with a specific course mindfulness which at one time would have been called meditation but so there's a lot of things in here that maybe won't apply to, to everybody watching this so i should skip over some of the pages i'm not a buddhist but I do love some of the words, um, some of the sayings. They're all so positive and loving. And I think, you know, perhaps all, most of us, those with faith or without faith, still believe in these nice positive sayings. But I won't read them out because it's very personal. Um, some of you might like them, but others won't. So I'm going to leave the sayings oh i lied i really lied <laughs> this next page is full the benefits of mindfulness now i really won't read out the 12 points here but what i will read out and i've forgotten that gelon tubton here um is a monk gelon means monk and that's his name tubton and i follow him on youtube and he said journaling is a psychological tool and i was amazed and i thought it absolutely is you it's something you can get lost in you can build your confidence up with your self-esteem and really really enjoy it so i thought i must put that in but i promise you that's the only one that i'll read out unless i forget <laughs> this page is for embroidery stitches anyone new to embroidery might want to just sit and have a look at the pictures so that's quite self-explanatory the page here is often a good way to start your slow stitching or your hand embroidery and it's on a picture i've taken from an art book um, it's sunflowers as you can see by van vincent van gogh now all i've done I've actually sewn through the paper 
with straight stitches. Now, we could actually stretch a point here and say, oh, individual running stitches. I mean, we know the truth, but if it works for you, it works for me, it works. So they are actually straight stitches. These are satin stitches. They're close together. So if you imagine a long running stitch side by side and then even closer still, that is satin stitch. The old looking pieces here are vintage. I dyed them it with orange food colouring. This piece here is um, from the tablecloth that I mentioned earlier on. That is from my night table. My bedside cabinet has a, a tablecloth on it. And I, th oh, I thought I'd just cut a flower out of it and hide the hole and stick that there. I just thought it finished it off. So I like that page. It's nice and bright and cheerful. And I do love hot and warm colours. This is very similar. Once again, it's on paper. These are dragonflies. They were, they're broken earrings. This one's secured with a lobster clasp. Um, that one is over sewn. But it was very easy to do. I've added some blingy sequins if the light's picking them up. The light's beginning to fail now. Um, and that was that was really fun to do. A little bit of ribbon couched down here. A little bit of ribbon either end of the page. This page is basically like a sampler of stitches that can be used. It's This one looks quite complicated, but it isn't. It's running stitch. It's three rows of running stitch. Let's see if I can get that up. Three rows of running stitch with cross stitch between and I think that's quite a lovely effect it looks so complicated but it isn't it's really easy then we have three rows of running stitch here and whipped running stitch so that is running stitch evenly placed or spaced and then a, a second thread whipped or woven in between over and under more running stitch and my all-time favorite stitch feather stitch I love that stitch you can do so much with it it's really an open chain stitch but you can make these as long as you want and it just looks fabulous the longer the better another piece of applique tablecloth here a little bit of applique batik all with running stitch across and down over a little bit of lace and this is more like this is like a little corner a little sample corner there's gingham on top of the calico there's pink and white gingham here and then some gold tulle on top and then that's all sewn down secured with some running stitch feather stitch and herringbone stitch I love herringbone stitch as well another page on for on paper this is a six by six square from a six by six pack this is the actual design that was on the paper so i've just um here that's the actual design this is appliqued um so I, I once again i've used satin stitch here and i think that gives the real feel of petals there this is from oh gosh an adult coloring book do you find that when people know you're arty crafty they like to buy you things like adult coloring books oh my goodness i have four of them in this room and i find them so stressful i really do the the small narrow lines and trying to get a pen nib in between them so they're shelved i thought what can i do with these you know i'm really grateful that people have bought them for me so i chop them up now and embroider on them and the effect is lovely this one's outlined with blanket stitch once again these lace bits here and here are from the partner's curtain so he will be really pleased that i've used it at least twice i love this page this is sort of experimental work from my rag bag. I love 
experimenting with with textiles textures and fabrics and pulling them to pieces to see what happens if you stretch them or shrink them withdraw threads from them just play around and i thought oh that is lovely i need to use that well at the same time in one of the art books i have i saw this picture and i can't remember who it's by it was quite a bleak picture there's a castle and along here there's some farm buildings and it was a bleak looking beach and that's all no texture to it or anything so i thought i know i'm going to give it a thunderous looking sky and i'm going to satin stitch here um some of the puddles the pools of water which i've done there and there and there and here I've, I've put some texture and these are just straight stitches straight stitches in beige and dark brown here straight stitch again and here and here there's cross stitch there's some herringbone and some straight stitch to give it a lovely lovely texture I think it looks nice too here exactly the same as I've done here and here this that piece there is the same as I did here I pulled pulled the threads I took some out and I stuck them down and I thought that that gives the nice effect of perhaps reeds sort of swaying in the breeze a little bit this picture I think is probably my least favorite one and I don't know why I think it's because underneath this background fabric here is woven it's woven up into one inch squares and I did this um, for a course that I was teaching on and I didn't like it didn't like it at all it was drab it was flat it was a beautiful piece of fabric <laughs> before I started it and I completely ruined it how many of us have done that <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask you to put your hands up but I know I've done it more than once so I thought I'm not going to waste it so I've appliqued on this um, use the slow stitching around here around here and the, the big butt that's actually a butterfly that's a butterfly I appliqued a lace butterfly there and I've just run some uh, running stitches around here herringbone around the edge and here is once again blanket stitch now a lot of people tend to confuse blanket and buttonhole stitch they're not the same buttonhole stitch is knotted it has a knot this is blanket stitch and it's far more easier to do and it's a love it's actually a lovely stitch to do you can space it as much as far apart as you want or you can push it together and the effects always different once again from my the old favorite vintage tablecloth now, as you can see most of the pages have been edged in this fabric i bought this in aldi and it was one of the fat packs um i think it was 3.99 for maybe six lovely big squares and it, well I looked at it and I thought oh, it's far too nice to use so I am using it but I can mitre as part of my art course I did the history of art in education as part of that for some reason textile students had to do a year of dressmaking and as much as I like making clothes it wasn't my thing I was more into experimental art and textiles so but getting back to the dressmaking we had to learn to mitre and these mitres were measured by the lecturer and um if they if they weren't absolutely correct then we had to undo them and start again so all that mitering really turned me off so i don't mitre anymore i mean for a commission if somebody wanted them mitered then i would mitre but other than that i like that look it's honest and i'm sticking to that but as well the rawness the raw edge i love that i really do if my text if my uh, dressmaking 
lecturer was to see that, she would have a fit. They, they would not be tolerated. But then dressmaking is a very, very strict discipline. Right, this page is really lovely, I think it's bright. The background here is from a tablecloth. And I bought the tablecloth in, I think it was Morrison's along the high street. It's a whole matching range. Um, I'm not getting paid for saying that, but it's lovely. And I took a piece of that and I sewn over it. I've added beads to part of it. I've added a little bit of slow stitching, what I call play around here. A little bit of a PK from a German doily I had. Some eyelash lace. A little bit of play around again here. The play around is sitting in the chair, watching the TV, thinking my hands need to be busy. I know, I'll play around with my fabrics and threads. So that's what my play arounds are. Once again from the old trusted vintage tablecloth and some collage. So this is really a mixture of sewing, applique and collage. And it's really fun to do. The obligatory bookmark and lace on the back. That is just sewn down. So that will go in there. This I think is fabulous, this modern needlework. It's in a pocket. That is paper. Modern needlework. I dyed this cover. I put the cover on there and I embellished this antique lace with some stitchery on there. So slow stitch in there. Embroidery stitches. Now this is all, that is all unique. And I've cut them out. And I thought this was this is really nice. It's surprising. I, I have a feeling this probably dates from about the 30s. But nothing's changed. Daisy stitch is still the same. The techniques and the methods are still the same. Um, it may look dated, but the methods just aren't dated at all. And I think that's really useful. I love that. I quite love that one. This as well is now if you look very carefully at this you can see the outline of a patchwork flower if you like a flower it's five hexagons no sorry it's seven hexagons sewn together and then embellished then i have embellished each hexagon with buttons beads slow stitching a uh, blanket stitch around the edge, lace, uh, lazy daisy chains, and really anything I could get my hands on. <laughs> Batik again here, and oh, some slow stitching here in that little corner there. And this is string. I've couched down some string just for some added interest. Hold that up, you can see that bit better. Now, because this is so big, this this um, journal, and you're going to be horrified when I tell you that this oh, is just one signature. <laughs> oh, I will show you the cover at the end. One signature. And it started out quite modest, but it got bigger and bigger and bigger. But anyway... Because it is so heavy, and these are cards, there's cards between each page, it needs some securing because of the weight of the pages. So I've placed a couple of these to secure the pages, to tighten the pages up, to give them something to grip onto. So I thought, I, I don't want to just leave them bare. So this, this was actually fabric. I didn't embroider that at all. And I put some pins on there and it looked as if it was intended to be here. And it looked nice with the pins, but obviously making the follow-up journal. I removed them for that journal, but never mind. This page um, is another six by six page, which ends round about here. 
and it had butterflies. What you see here is the design that was on the paper. All I have did, once again, I stitched, just straight stitches, satin stitch, over the butterflies. Now, after I did that, I didn't do that one. After I did that, I covered it with tulle, gold tulle, and did a running stitch around it. Now, did the running stitch, put the tool on there, and it looked very dull. It, it looked dull. There wasn't much colour there. So, I cut away some of these areas to make it brighter. So, this half is covered in tool. That's been cut away. I think you can see it here. It's more noticeable here because it's brighter. Then... I love the I love the bottom bit of this this textured piece it's straight stitch running stitch and in between some of the straight stitches and the running stitches I have woven just woven between them gathered them up pulled some together and made it look like grass added some buttons for flower heads and of course these were bought like that and I've just secured them with a couple of stitches and that was that was really nice to do I thoroughly enjoyed doing that one very easy as well because there's only let me see one stitch and it's a straight stitch running stitch is just a straight stitch these are straight stitches straight stitches um crisscrossy straight stitches and weaving that's all that page is it's surprising isn't it it really is surprising now out of the whole journal this is my favorite page and i'm going to see if i can make this just a little bit bigger this page here is my favorite one and once again it's more or less like a sampler it has couching couching and it's been couched over by herringbone stitch it has running stitch feather stitch um, more couching chain stitch couching feather stitch here and this little square here and that's to make give it interest and more texture because that is basically smooth against this rough area that's all couching and running stitch so once again this is still just the couple of stitches that I used in the beginning haven't added anything more than the few stitches that I've been using from the beginning this is similar to the other bit that was in the middle to strengthen it and all I did was withdraw some threads and I wove in between and added some running stitches here for interest. Um, I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller now. That's it. I think that's it. Maybe not. Perhaps a little bit bigger. You don't want to see me in there. Goodness. You wouldn't sleep if you saw me. So this is a pocket. As you can see. Well, um, it's not a pocket. It's the other thing. I can't remember what it's called but anyway with the obligatory luggage tags and these aren't actually finished yet I need to finish the top of those off details here of how to do herringbone stitch it's a tuck pocket it's a tuck that's it so they tuck in there this piece here once again it's just chain stitch French knots some running stitch um twisted chain stitch ladder chain stitch and that's it so it's basically the chain stitch family with some french knots and it's lovely and textured it's actually based on tree bark um there's another piece in the back and you'll see you'll see it better in the back but that is tree bark and believe it or not it actually feels like it so those can go back in there 
more tags, a saying here, and there's a kindness. That's a clip here that just says kindness. And there's also, which fell out earlier on, a very small envelope that goes here. Now, I think I need to thank Sonia Steptoe for this idea. Now, I'm really sorry if you do see some of your, if you identify um, some of your ideas in here, but I can't remember anyone's name. I follow a couple of ladies avidly, and Sonia Steptoe is one of them, um, and I find her really insp inspiring, and I think that was her idea. This one up here I forgot to say is embroidered and that's attention attention and that was for the course that I did for, that I told some journaling pages a little bit of a run around now this is slow stitching as you can see I actually caught someone putting this in the bin and you can see how narrow it is and it was about six inches long and I screeched like a banshee no no I'll have that and uh, whoever it was looked at me and went oh for goodness sake what are you going to do with that well I didn't know then but it just shows you you should never throw any fabric away and it doesn't matter how small it is <laughs> now that's my excuse for keeping a rag bag and I'm sticking to it these two feathers and I, I just love that I love that um, an authentic advertisement, some little runarounds here, um, Lazy Daisy, or some call them pinwheels, Lazy Daisy, runaround, TV runarounds with some buttons and instructions for French knots, some graph paper. This page I'm coming clean about and I'm going to soften you up first so some threads that go in that little pocket there this is upside down now I printed the petals with fabric paint and I did this uh, the feather stitch and it looked okay put some threads there but I actually like it upside down now it sounds like an excuse that I have sewn it upside down but that was a deliberate thing I just love the way the feather stitch falls down it reminds me of seaweed but I can't quite come up <laughs> what the flowers remind me of if that's seaweed <laughs> but so my work as I said we make the rules up love that that was from I believe I that was from my daughter's dress I'm sure that's where I took that from or she gave it to me I think and running stitch and a little bit of decoration there so for those of you who would like meditation i have a 10 minute breathing exercise here now it's eight steps to it but oh my goodness it is just so difficult kind trying to concentrate for 10 minutes and the idea is that you you get nice and relaxed in a chair and you become aware of your body and your senses and every time your mind wanders which it does you have to bring it back um, to the, the present and it is really fabulous to see people doing this but I can't do it I just can't do it and I've tried uh, an envelope uh, and a little notebook inside in there and then we have this is like this reminds me of an artist palette I was just trying out some ideas here and this is what it turned into so this is my artist palette just a few rough sketches if you like if you want to call them rough sketches that wasn't too bad I thought that was quite nice I wouldn't mind doing that on a larger scale perhaps squares and joining the skip the squares die in the background that's all slow stitching as well that's all running stitch um, and there's not really much I can say about this because it is purely experimental this page as well I love that 
I love this here. That opens up. That was an envelope. Opens up. But this is from one of those adult colouring books that I mentioned earlier. And it's paper with sewing, stitching on the top over the, the uh, diagram or the picture that was in the book. So the picture is just as you see it there. And I've added the stitching and the button, a few stitches on the button and the lace, a couple of French knots, nothing mind blowing, but look how it looks. I think it looks lovely. I love that. I'd like someone to send that to me. <laughs> and in here we have some buttons and these are actual buttons apart from these little ones in the background. But these are real buttons. And on the back, how to sew buttons on. I think buttons make a wonderful embellishment. I think they're really wonderful to use. And now you can get them in ceramic, crystal, plastic, glass, wooden, any, any fabric um, as well. Felt, cotton. Um, when I go to the, the craft fairs, I see buttons, all shapes and sizes, and they're quite inspiring. So I think it's very useful to know how to sew on a button, how to sew a shank button on there as well. Oh, I'm sure you recognise this, all you journalers. Some graph paper. Patchwork, crazy patchwork. All the bits from the rag bag, just sewn together with... A feather stitch can actually do this with running stitch I have done it in the past and filled these in with running stitch go in different directions and it looks really nice but I needed this just to look as it does now but um, there was a temptation before I mounted it in here to finish it off but I thought no no because that is how crazy patchwork starts out but um, that's a nice thing to do as well. This I found in a cupboard um, in the back of beyond. And I thought, oh, I did that years ago. But I'm going to put that in because I like it. Another advertisement. Now this, this one here, is, as you can see, it's a fruit bag. It's a fruit net that the oranges came in. The paper underneath I made, handmade that paper, dyed it, and then I stuck, no I didn't, no I didn't, I'm telling a lie now, I wove through this first, these are all woven, all these threads, and then I stuck it onto the handmade paper. But this was a lovely thing to do, different, there's ribbons there, there's twine, and there's wool, um, what have we got there? Cotton. So there's all sorts of threads there. An embellishing page with a few straight stitches at the bottom, making it look like grass. Um, some green satin, I don't know if you can see that, it's green satin ribbons being couched down here. More journaling pages. This was the edge of tray cloth a very old tray cloth so i used this, the middle and was left with the outside edges like this so i thought oh i know what i'll do so I, all i've done is slow stitch round the shape following the curves round the curves following the shape and i've put them down on here i stuck them on there and this is a little piece of binding held in place with a herringbone stitch, a little bit of running stitch and some more herringbone stitch on a strip of fabric. I thought that looked, that looked quite good. More instructions there for feather stitch and blanket stitch. A little bit of journaling page there, a few stitches at the top for decoration and an appliqued rose which has actually not been appliqued it's been stuck down so it's a collage that's more from the tablecloth that i used earlier on 
and I stuck these in place. Here we have a card with a skein on it, a skein of silk, because you never know when you might need a white skein of silk. <laughs> this, I wonder how many of you will remember this, this sort of thing. It's a singer, it's from Singer Sewing Machines, and it's to do with the small hand machines so you remember the small black machines and they some of them had the most gorgeous gold writing and gold decoration on them and you'd sit and you'd turn their hands around and round i had my first one when i was about eight and that set me up for life seriously i loved it so much that um all i ever wanted to do was to to go into craft arts textiles and I think it was all because of that first sewing machine but anyway that is a photocopy from the original which I really don't know when that dates for but it must be a long long time ago because the price here is one and six for sewing machine attachments oh can you imagine that one and six is five six seven about seven and a half pence I think Right, we have another envelope here and a little book and this once again is all adverts i just think it looks fabulous this just to give you look it's two shillings again two shillings that's 10p um and it's just so interesting to see the styles and of course, most of them are in black and white as well. Wouldn't get that now, would we? This is sort of self-explanatory, really. It's all bits and pieces, flowers, odds, odds and ends, a little bit of fabric I was given, and it's stuck down over a branch of, I don't know what sort of blossom it is, but it's blossom. And the flowers up here as well, just to give a nice summery spring feel with all the flowers. Right, journalers, you will recognise this. Everybody seems to use that at some point. This is handmade paper. I bought this and the leaf was already embedded in there. And I just saw it, it added something. And... I'm anxious because I have more to actually sew around here, do a running stitch around here as the basis of a design uh, and let it progress into something bigger. But that is the basis of what I intend to, to use. This I found in my daughter's workbox. I said to her sort of, babes, do you really want that? You know, can, can I have it? She said, yes, mum, of course you can. So I thought, I'm going to stick that there because that leaf looked very lonely without something there. A little bit more of graph paper there. Another, whoops, another envelope with yet another little book in there. And this, oh look, this, after what I said about the coloured pictures, there's a coloured picture there. Look at this. I mean, it's so dated, isn't it? But isn't it marvellous? It's just marvellous, I think. Photography was just photography then, wasn't it? Nothing arty about it. Right, these leaves I bought from the pound shop, I think. I'm sure I bought these from the pound shop. And it was quite a substantial bag of leaves. Um, I've slow stitched on there, some running stitches added some lace on top and a few little sequin stars the same here only i didn't use the sequin stars i've used a little button and some slow stitch runaway for my playtime now this is the piece of tree bar i was i spoke about earlier now this is from this tree here and it actually feels like tree bark. Now the stitches are the same as they were for the other 
that's not coming out too well um, the stitches are basically the same as they were for the other piece of tree bark um, it, earlier on in the in the journal and it's all chain stitch um, I don't think there's any other stitches there but but the chain stitch family and it's a variety of thicknesses of threads to give it that texture thick chunky wool here that isn't really coming out too well but it's very thick thick chunky well wool here against silks and cottons here and it's you can hear you can hear the texture my favorite page of all this one for two reasons make that smaller for two reasons my son is in his 20s and he's always buying new shirts and they're lovely shirts and um, occasionally he comes in and another new shirt mum and I will say oh babes can I just have an inch of that from somewhere where nobody will see it's missing perhaps the inside of a cuff or shirt tail and he said, Mum, you say that every time. He said, no, no. He said, I know you want to smock it. That's all you want to do is smock it. And he will laugh and he'll go. Well, a couple of months ago, he appeared with a bin liner full of his old shirts. And look, it's just right for smocking. He's absolutely right. But it's his shirt, his shirt, his shirt, his shirt. His shirt. His shirt. It's all his shirts, bless him. So I think actually he does quite like his mum at times. <laughs> I made some texture with this wool. And that is just gorgeous fluffy wool. And more wool there. And some buttons. Some buttons to complement the colours of the background. This started life, this page, as patchwork. Um, one of my classes was doing a patchwork, um, or oh, bits and pieces. They were doing patchwork, and I did this as a sampler. If you can imagine it without the stitches on. And I stood back and I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. Couldn't make out why. And then I realized the patches are too small. They're just very tiny. So I did some sewing over it, put the slow stitches, the running stitches up that way, across there. That one is squares. Added some lace, appliqued lace. That flower is appliqued and lace as well. And I think it looks far nicer like that. So I was quite pleased with that. And it's still patchwork. It was still patchwork, but... I called it embellish patchwork so the basic idea was patchwork but it ended up with something else but it went down quite well once again this is a tree now this is very very old this is vintage in itself it's about 40 years old and it's actually a piece that I did oh my god well it would have been oh my goodness I mean sorry oh my goodness um 40 years ago when i was very very young and of course i found it amongst a lot of other things in mum's loft and um, i don't even recognize the stitches i've used french knots i can see those but i thought that really hasn't aged there's nothing about it that would make you think oh that's really old that must be 40 years old but no it's it hasn't aged whatsoever so i'm keeping that and like that's made a nice teaching age aid and another tree i just love trees i just adore trees seriously so this tree here is a picture and i've added the stitches up up the trunk and along the branches and down the twigs as well and here I've added a few straight stitches. Uh, there are actually trees behind that. So I've added the straight stitches there and a little bit of greenery, running stitches, once again, gathered together and woven. This is from one of my children's Christmas sacks. 
I've taken a piece out of that. Um, they won't realise until December when the sacks come out again that one of them has got this shape missing from the back of it. So I'm not sure what to do about that. <laughs> but I've got I've got plenty of time to worry about that. Oh, we've drawn some threads and I've woven these threads in. There's some running stitch here as well. And the last page you'll be pleased to hear says happy. And I bought this in a charity shop. Um, I was tempted to put B up here just for the sake of the journal, be happy. And I thought, no, somebody has spent an awful lot of time doing this and I'm going to leave it just as they left it. So that is that. Now the inside, I think I might turn this round now. The inside, oh, yes, I'm going to turn it round. I think that's better. This is the back inside cover. And once again, it's vintage tablecloth here. Now, I didn't dye it with tea or coffee because just sometimes I get a little bit um, fed up with all the brown. Brown and beige, wherever. Brown and beige. So I thought I'm purposely leaving that white and not only that i thought it went well with this as well this back page the whiteness and the flowers so that is why that is that's been left white i've embellished it further with some applique and some running stitch in gold thread a button um, some more little flowers that i've appliqued here uh, lace and this is actually a pocket and this lives in there it's another little notepad so that goes in there I've also found that as well that dropped out but I'm not sure where that goes and that's a running stitch card for running stitch and that as well and I'm going to have to put these back in there later so the cover right the cover now, I think this might be all I can get in of the cover. Now, I want you to see the spine. There isn't one here. There isn't a hard spine there. I had to make the decision whether to have a hard spine um, or to just have um, as it is here. So, I really didn't want to cut into the fabric because of cutting through all the stitches. That is why I've ended up with one signature because it was easier to sew in than it was with lots of signatures into a soft backing. So that is why it looks like that. It's held together with a bracelet. Now I bought this bracelet in Poundland. Now guess how much that was then? No, it wasn't. It was 50p. Um, and it's actually nice enough, I think, to wear. But that holds it together. That's one part of it. And that's the bit that it locks into. So I was very pleased with that. So if I just show you there, that's how that looks. Sewn in with pamphlet stitch. Now, I've only done it twice. Really, I could have done it just perhaps another bit there and one there but I think it might have been too tight if I'd had added any more and the pages wouldn't have opened so that is why I had only two now that is my story and I'm sticking to it now I hope you enjoyed this if you did would you please like it and maybe subscribe um, it forms this forms an introduction to a course on slow stitching that I'm planning but it depends on how many subscribers I get as to whether I carry on and make the course which I've already got anyway <laughs> I've just got to film it but if I don't get many subscribers then I'll assume there isn't a need for this so if you are interested please subscribe and I'll carry on so until next time thank you very very much for staying till the end i really do appreciate that and 
take care and look after yourselves. And thank you very, very much.